So yesterday we we stated the Poincaré Lelon formula. So let's uh, prove it today. So assume X is a smooth compact complex manifold. And L bar is an emission line model on X. We have the following proposition. By point carré le long. Let S be a meromorphic section of L on X. Then we have an equation of currents, currents of type N1. So in this vector space of current, of type one one, we have the equation DDC minus log norm of S squared plus integration on the divisor of S, which is a current, is equal to the form C1 L bar. So C1 L bar is a current which is represented by a form, the first form, and delta dV is a singular current. So we have, we can go from this singular current to this smooth current by DDC of minus log S squared. So to prove this proposition, We let Z be the support of S. The support of, a, of this divisor. And we press CM2, which is Yonaka resolution of singularities. So we get a map from a smooth compact manifold to X, such that P minus one of Z is a divisor with normal crossing. So the equation of P minus one Z is Z one Z K equals zero for some coordinate, local coordinate Z I. So if we consider the inverse image of S, the zeros of, the, of P upper star of F are contained in the inverse image of, of Z so pi star of S equals locally a product of the coordinate of the local coordinate of this uh, neighborhood. In other words, you have Z1, Z2. That's the equation of the divisor with normal crossing. Z1, Z2 equals zero. And the divisor of S is supported on Z1 and Z2. So it's the power of Z1 or power of Z2. Okay? So we shall prove proposition three for X tilde 
that is we assume x equals s tilde and s equals s tilde equals the pi upper star of s. So we have x tilde mapping to x and we prove Poincare along on x tilde. And we get this equation on s tilde and it, and if we want it on x, we take a form on x and it, uh, consider it's pulled back and integrate. So if we have point, uh, the proposition 3 for x tilde and pi upper star of s, we shall get proposition 3 for x and s. OK. So from now on, x is s tilde. And there are two cases. Bilinearity. I mean, the norm of S is exponential of some function rho times z1 to the n1, zk to the nk. So we can develop log of norm of S. So First case, log of norm of s equals rho, is infinity. Second case, log norm of s is log z1. And of course, for z2, zk, the same argument will be valid. So we distinguish two cases. So in case A, We are outside the divisor of S. And then we know by the definition of C1 x tilde, if you remember, in the first proposition, we define the first shunt form as DDC of this expression in the play outside the divisor of S. So assume this log S squared is infinity, then DDC of, of rho will be the first transform. So in case A, we have DDC of rho equals C1 of L bar by definition of C1 L bar. So in case B, we have to prove some identity. So we consider omega a smooth form with compact support. This we can do by partition of unity. Call, call the, the support contained in some open U. We have to show that minus integral on U of DDC S squared. And remember that to apply DDC to current is the same as applying DDC to the test form. So the left hand side will be DDC omega against log z1 square. I mean, this is the definition of DDC log s squared. Uh, DDC of log z1 squared against omega is the same as log z1 square on DDC of omega. That was the definition of derivation of currents. So, OK. So this should be equal. to the integral of omega 1 of omega on z, on, on the divisor of z1. So it will be, in fact, equal to the divisor of omega on some small uh, neighborhood of the, of the divisor of s.
so is uh, Okay, so we shall essentially use the Stokes formula. Okay, so the, the left hand side can be written limit as epsilon goes to zero of integral of z1 at least epsilon because uh, when epsilon goes to zero, this will be the integral on z1 equals in u. So this difference, this function here, is our left hand side. But now we are outside the singularity. We look at z1 bigger than epsilon, so we have the divider and we, we integrate on this. So we can apply Stokes theorem for smooth form and smooth functions. Well, what happens is that if we consider d of leg log z1 squared dc of omega, by Leibniz formula, this is nothing but d of log c1 squared dc omega plus or minus log c1 squared ddc omega. So we are interested in the integral of log c1 squared ddc omega, and by this computation, uh, of uh, using Lamlin's formula, this is the same as the integration of the boundary of log z1 square dc omega plus this term. So now this is equal by Stokes. Stokes will tell you what is the integral of this boundary of, of a function on, on this tube on this complement of a tube, so we get limit limit epsilon goes to zero of the integral on the boundary of the function log z1 squared dc omega. This is by applying the Stokes formula with the boundary of a form integral on some uh, compact set with boundary. We can integrate on the boundary of the function. There is this, and we still have the expression here, so plus. We still have this expression here, so we have to write sigma li limit as epsilon goes to zero of d log z1 squared, d log z1 squared times dc omega. And, and I should say integral on d1 at least epsilon. So we keep on going, we apply Stokes again. So we compute this boundary here by by saying that this is the boundary of log z1 squared dc omega minus ddc, or dcd maybe, log z1 squared 
stems omega. So this is again Leibniz applied to this product. So we get the first expression, limit epsilon goes to zero integral log z1 square dc omega on z1 equals epsilon. And then the second term here, we express by the Leibniz formula, and we get this is equal to this, plus limit as a plan goes to zero of integral z1 at least epsilon dc log z1 squared d omega So by, by Stokes, we can say that this is the same as the, the integral of this times omega. So limit as epsilon goes to zero of, of this minus limit epsilon goes to zero integral on z1 at least epsilon ddc log z1 squared times omega. So the expression we are computing is this, is this limit plus this limit plus this limit. So let's first look at this limit. <coughs> z1 has norm epsilon, so we have log epsilon. We have log epsilon on a circle of radius epsilon. So when we integrate, we get epsilon, log epsilon. And then we take epsilon and goes to zero, so the integral vanishes. So this limit here is zero. Next. Limit epsilon goes to zero here, while well, contains DDC log z1 squared. And we know that DDC log of the normal function is zero. We, you remember when we defined the first first volume, we had to check that DDC log of the normal of a holomorphic function is zero. This is zero, and we are left with the middle term. Equal limit epsilon goes to zero. Integral z1 equals epsilon. dc log z1 squared times omega. But we compute in polar coordinates. This expression here, dc log z1 squared. So one can check that in polar coordinate, dc log z1 squared is d theta 1, where theta is the angle, divided by 2 pi. So now we are integrating on d1 equals epsilon omega times z theta 1 over 2 pi. And we take the limit as epsilon goes to 0. Well, this means we are integrating omega on a circle around the divisor. And then we take the limit as epsilon goes to 0. So this limit is nothing but the integral on the divisor 
of omega. So we have proved that in this case, where omega the C1 is equal to 0, so we have proved that, uh, that DDC log Z1 squared plus delta Z1 equals 0. I mean, here there is, of course, a, a sign. But DDC log Z1 squared is the same as integrating on Z1 equals 0. So this finishes the proof in the case B of the poincaré lolon formula. OK. So this completes the proof of theorem 1, which is the existence of the height. Say it again. Uh, I forgot. Oh. I erase everything, so oh, it's okay. difficult to. It's okay. So, so where is the chart? Yes. So, so you have long the square Yes. Where did the distance go? Did In the definition of the left hand side. Oh. So the left hand side is precisely the integral of log z1 square oh, yes. against ZDC omega. Oh. And we yes. replace this by the Using by the Leibniz formula yes. and uh, Okay. But since uh, here we are just uh, applying the definition in some sense. No no I mean if you remember the first step yeah. Well, well, the first step was this equality here. Yeah. And I think uh, all the composition of this side of the board is uh, for this term. No, but this, this expression here yeah. is what we start with. Because we compute DDC of log z1 square. Yeah. So it's the same of applying DDC to omega and integrating it against log z1 square. Oh, I see. So we need it. No, no, it did not disappear. It was there from the beginning. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. This is explained in the notes, uh, so if you want to check uh, again. Okay. So I want to give an interpretation of the height as an intersection number. Because I've, after all, I have not explained what I mean by arithmetic intersection. So this is uh, as follows. So we consider x a regular projective flat scheme of z. And we let zp of x for any p at least 0, the group of co-dimension p cycles on x. That is, it's an abelian group spanned by co-dimension p irreducible subvariety of x. So when p equals 1, this is a group of divisors. OK. We have the following notion, definition. A green current
for z a cycle of co-dimension p is a current g of type p minus 1, p minus 1, such that ddc g plus integration on z is equal to omega, omega being smooth. So somehow we take the Poincaré long formula as a definition of green function. So this is by analogy to the case P equals one. We say that that G is a green current for Z when DDCG plus integral on delta Z, which is a singular current, the sum of these two is a smooth current. It's represented by a smooth form. So that's the definition. So let me give some examples. First case is assume I have a irreducible uh, closed variety in X where the codimension of Y is P minus 1. And assume I have a function on Y, a non-trivial rationalization F on Y. So I can define The divisor of f this will be a cycle of codimension p in x dimension codimension 1 in y is therefore codimension p in x and i claim that g equals log S squared, which is defined by G omega equals integral on Y of, so minus log F squared, minus log F squared against omega. So that's the definition of the left-hand side. We integrate on Y log F times omega. So we have, by Poincaré le long, for the trivial line bundle on Y, we have that DDC G, or DDC minus log F square, so more. plus integral on the divisor of S is equal to zero because we are in the case of the trivial line model with a trivial metric. So C1 is zero and the Poincaré long equation relates DDC of log F square with integral on divisor of F. So we get a, a, a green current for divisor of F by taking minus log f squared. So that's the first example. And another example, which is uh, Trivial example. Assume I have a current in dp minus 2 pi minus 1 of x, of xc, or, and a current v of type p minus 1, p minus 2 
of a tree. Well, if I apply d bar or du, I get a current of type p minus one, p minus one, and this is a green current for the cycle zero because ddc of du because this is like dd bar du so d bar square is zero so this is zero and similarly ddc d bar v is equal to zero so we have a trivial case of current which are boundaries they are green current for the cycle zero okay so we consider, we define two groups. First, the group of arithmetic cycle, so a cycle and a green current, and the, the sum of two objects like this is simply time-wise, so z plus z prime g plus g prime. And inside dp hat of x, we have a subgroup by a subgroup spanned by the expression divf minus log f squared. So the first example of the green current. Okay, and we can also consider in this subgroup the current zero du plus d bar v Uh, defined here. So we consider that this example that is div f log f squared and du d bar v are trivial examples. So we are interested in the quotient of z p at of x by Rp of x. So we consider this quotient, and we call it the p, co-dimension p, arithmetic show group, of x. So these are arithmetic cycle, modulo, divisor of function, and trivial green currents. So if you wish, this is some kind of cohomology of x. So I will not have time to detail the properties and construction of CH out of B. Just let me just give you an example. Example. Well, as before, let L be a line model on X. Let S be a rational section. Of L. Assume there is a metric on L and consider the pair divided of S 
minus log norm squared by Poincaré Laurent. This is an arithmetic cycle, and this arithmetic cycle lives in CH1 a hat of x. So this is sometimes written as first chunters C1 hat of L. So we have the following proposition. Proposition uh, something. Proposition 5. C1 induces an isomorphism between two groups. One is the arithmetic Picard group, pick hat of X. And the other one is the first Sha group. So pick hat of X is, is a group of isometric isomorphism classes. of line model with metric. We can make a group with line model with metric by considering the tensor product of two line models as some of, of them in the group. So we have the group P hat of X, which are line model up to isomorphism which preserves the metric. And this maps to CH1 of X and C1 hat is an isomorphism. So this is not so difficult to see that this group and this group are isomorphic. OK? Now this, we discuss intersection. When P and Q are natural integers, there exists a product and the intersection pairing between cycles of third dimension P, cycle of co-dimension Q, and you expect cycle of co-dimension P plus Q, but there is a difficulty to define it. We get the product only in the CH hat P plus Q of X tensor Q. We have to neglect the torsion in the target group. So there is an intersection pairing with the following property. can define two kinds of map. The first one maps arithmetic cycles to algebraic cycles. And the second map, omega, goes from CH hat Px to forms of type PP. 
on XC. And this is a map which changes ZG to DZCG plus delta Z. By definition, this is a smooth sum, and I call it omega. So we have a morphism from CH hat of x to CH of x, and a morphism from CHPX to forms after PP, where the intersection on arithmetic shell group is such that Z of x intersection Y is Z of x Z of y and omega of x intersection y is an external subproduct of omega x and omega y. So we are, we are able to lift both the algebraic intersection and the differential form for the uh, product as a product of CHPX with CHQ of X. Okay, so maybe I give a, a little uh, feeling of what is uh, the product. So I have Z and G, maybe I write it GZ and Z and Y, GY, which are two cycles on X. And I want to define the product. So the first thing is to define the intersection of y and z. I mean, if you remember when we discussed x, we had to consider intersection divisor of t. And the way we did it, we suppose that x does not meet the divisor of t. And we t to the divisors. In general, uh, you cannot do things as uh, simply, you have to work harder to define the intersection of cycles. So this cycle will exist in the following group. CHP, so we first Consider the generic fiber of Y and Z. That is the cycle induced by Y and by Z on SQ, on the generic fiber. So now we are in characteristic zero. We have a variety of characteristic zero of a field. And there is a so-called moving lemma, which tells you that you can assume that the component meet in the good dimension that the intersection of the component, component of the intersection has co-dimensions, the sum of the co-dimensions. So this you can do over Q, but you cannot do it over Z. There is no known moving lemma for varieties over Z. So what you do is instead you define the intersection not as a cycle, but as a class so there we i mean there are two components the first component is look at the generic fiber you have y q and z q assume they meet properly 
Then there is a formula of serve to compute the multiplicities of intersection. And this gives you a cycle of codimension p plus u on the generic fiber. But this is not enough to have a cycle on so full of x. So we also have a component in what I denoted CHP fine of x. which is the union of the kernel of CHPX minus uh, goes to CHP of X minus phi, where phi is a contain is a closed set uh, mapping I mean, which does not meet the generic fiber. So I can consider cycle with support, uh, with support finite fibers. And I can look at codimension P cycle on X with support fibers. And what happens is that there is an intersection product with values not in the char group, in the cycle group, but in the char group with support finite fibers. So I will not give the definition, but this is, uh, this gives you an idea of how hard it is to define the intersection of Y and Z. I mean, this is why we have to translate with Q for the intersection in this in CRM3. OK? So assume you have solved the question of how to define the intersection of the two cycle. And now we want a green current for the intersection. So we have a green current for Y, a green current for Z, and we consider the intersection, which is GY, GZ, given by the following formula. GY star GZ equals delta Y GZ plus GY Omega Z. So I have this you see GY plus delta Y is a form omega Y. DDC GZ plus delta Z equals omega Z. And we have this product, the star product of two green current, which is defined by defined by delta y z plus g y omega z. So it's not defined in a symmetric way. So let me check at least formally that this is the right object. So we do a formal computation because again, uh, GY delta Z, which come uh, delta Y GZ here, is a product of two currents. So we have the same difficulty as we got with log S to define the product of log S and log T. In general, you have to define the product of delta Y times GZ. But let's assume you would not have, we don't have problem with product of currents, then we will compute DDC GY star GZ. And this will be DDC delta Y GZ plus DDC GY omega Z. 
the DDC of Delta Y is zero because Delta Y is closed. So we get Delta Y, DDC, GZ, plus DDC, GY, Omega Z. By the Poincaré Long equation for GZ, we know that the first thing is the same as omega Z minus omega Z minus delta DZC GZ is omega Z minus delta Z. And the second, DDC GY omega Z is the same as omega Y minus delta Y omega Z. So we develop this expression, and we have delta Y omega Z here minus delta Y omega Z there. So we get delta Y delta Z minus omega y, omega z. And it's natural to believe that this product of current is simply the integration on y intersection z and omega y, omega z is omega for the intersection. So this is only a formal computation which tells you why g y star g z is a good uh, candidate to be uh, the intersection, the green current for the intersection. Okay, so so the, so the y g y tensor g g z goes to the cycle y intersection z, which is defined up to rational numbers, with a green current gy star gz. OK? Now there is a property of functionality so let F be a morphism between arithmetic varieties so X and Y are projective regular and flat over Z then we get A pullback map from CHP hat of Y to CHP hat of X. And again, we have to transfer with Q. Uh, I, I think we have to transfer with Q here. There is also a direct image map. from CH hat PX to CH hat P plus dimension of Y minus dimension of X of X of Y. So there is pullback and direct image. And they are related to the product by the fact that f upper star of x multiplied by y is f upper star x f upper star y. And f lower star 
avec f upper star of y is the same as f low star of x times y. So these are the usual formula uh, and two parts. You ask whether the intersection product is symmetric, or you have to prove it. And this is the Stokes formula, essentially. Yes. So have y intersection z is equal to z intersection y. This has to be missing. Huh? There is a few missing in total. They have? There is a few missing in the so in y the second set belongs to CH p plus u. So we get the char group of x with support in finance fibers. Uh, could you mention, uh, I, I see, P plus Q. That was the question? Okay. Okay, to finish, I want to relate intersection theory with heights. Okay, as usual, x is a regular, projective, flat scheme of z. And let y in x the cross integral subscheme. Then I claim there is a map, which I denote by integral on y, going from the state chart of d minus p of y, so d is the dimension of x, there is a map from state chart d minus p of y to the real numbers. can integrate classes in this degree to get real numbers. So let me give you the definition. First, assume y is x. So we have a class x in CHD of x, 
This mean that x is a cycle G of dimension 0 for dimension B, D is so dimension 0, and GZ is a class of tau P minus 1, P mi D minus 1, D minus 1 on XZ. So z being of dimension 0 is a combination of cross points. On the other hand, gz is a class of top dimension on this variety, because xc has dimension d minus 1. So we define the integral of x to be, by definition, the sum of n alpha log cardinality of k alpha y alpha minus 1 half integral on, y, on xc of the form G. So what happens is that G, in this degree, is the same as a differential form up to boundaries. So this is true because G is of top dimension. So we can integrate this form, which is equivalent to G. So that's the definition of the integral of a class X on Y. First, Final place is, is this expression we saw already, and then we have the integral at infinity. So this was a case where y equals x. When y is contained in x, without being equal to x, we consider gy a green current for y in yc, in xc. And we define the integral of x on y to be the same as the integral on x of the product of x with y. So we call y the pair big Y with gy. So it's a, an arithmetic class on x. We consider its product with small x, and we integrate on x. And now we subtract the integral on xc e of omega x times gy. So the integral on x of x on y is the integral on big x of the product of x and y minus this integral. So we have the following fact. Integral on y does not depend on the choice of the green current gy. We can check that we, if we have another green current here, by this formula, we get the same integral. Okay, now we have the, 
last year I am. See, I'm five. The height of y is the integral on y of the product of C1 L bar to the power of the dimension of y. So really, heights are intersection numbers. I mean, algebra you take the integral of C1 L on a variety, this will give you the degree. And the, the philosophy is that the height of a, of a variety is the same as its degree. Okay. So. Yes. What's your question? Uh, it's, I, it's just a small thing, but I think uh, I forgot why should be like Why is any cross subset of X? I see what you say. So maybe uh, and I should double check. So I should say something else. I think that's uh, what you, you want. If I have a class of degrees, the dimension of y, I can integrate on y. But the class should be defined on the whole of x. And here, uh, the same. And this would be the case here, since C1 L bar is defined on the whole of the variety. And then I take the appropriate power, and the integral of this power on y is the height. So, So let prove theorem five. First, assume that P equals D. 
So why the cross point in X? Because Y is in D. Then by definition, the integral of X, Y, So X is the class of Y zero. Integral of X on Y is by definition of the high of the integral on Y is the log of the cardinality of KY. And this is exactly what we took as definition of the height of Y when Y has dimension zero. Is log of the cardinality of the residue field. So this fits. So now we assume that the dimension of Y is positive. And we have x equals c1 l bar to the d minus p minus 1. As integral on y of c1 l bar times x, I mean, the, this integral is what we want to compute, c1 l bar to the d minus p, equals the same as integral of x times c1 of l bar on y. So by the rule we gave, this is, I mean, we write y equals big y times gy, that is, we choose a green current for y. And this integral is, by definition, the integral over x of x c1 l bar times y minus 1 half integral on xc of omega x c1 l bar times gy. We wrote that the integral, uh, this is the uh, equality there, the integral of, of x on y is integral on x of the product on x and y minus integral of omega x gy. So we get the integral of x c1 times y on x minus integral of omega of x c1 against gy on x. OK? And now we say the following. Let stida be a section, or rational section, of L on X. And call S the restriction of tilde to Y. Now C1 of L bar, the first arithmetic chunk class, is by definition the class of the divisor of S tilde minus log norm of a still dash square. So this expression here is equal to the integral or maybe I should first compute this product here, x c1 l bar y. So 
This is the same as x multiplied by divisor of s tilde on y. Minus log of s tilde square star g y because I'm taking the product of c one l bar with y. So we can think of it as x divisor of s. Minus log is still a square. That's a y plus c one l bar g y. I mean, I have divisor of s still a restricted to y is the same as divisor of s, so I get x divisor of s, and there is the start product, so there is log s tilde times delta y plus c1 times gy. So now we assume that x is c1 l bar to the d minus p minus 1, and we get x, y, x, c1 l bar, y, equals when there is x, so equals z, 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 So we get z device, that is the intersection here, and the form is omega x times minus log s tilde squared delta y plus C1 L bar GY plus GD delta divisor of S. When I integrate on X, I will first integrate on the intersection device. So I will get So actually what happens is I, I am missing the last page of my notes. <laughs> so unless someone has them. So you will see in the notes uh, the end of the proof. <laughs> Maybe thank you very much. So we have this integral here, and I claim that this is integral on the divisor of s of x. Minus the integral one half the integral on y c of omega x 
log squared. This expression here plus one half integral on x of omega x, omega x here times u one l bar g y. Okay, now omega of x c one l bar is nothing but omega of x multiplied by omega c one. That that's a property we we saw for the product that it is compatible with omega, and omega of the first chain form. First chunk class is the first chunk form by definition. So we get integral of C1 L bar D minus P on X on Y. Finally, the integral on the divisor of S. Integral on the divider of s of x and the x is c one l bar to the d minus p minus one minus one half integral of c one l bar d minus p minus one log of s. This is the integral here. So finally, we have proved that the, this integral here is the same as the integral of the divider of s with one power less. So this means that I have exactly the last axiom to define the height. So I have the height of L of the height of Y is the height of the divider of S minus one half integral C one L log S. So I claim that this computation here consists in checking the second induction hypothesis defining the height of y. So this integral here coincides when the dimension is zero and satisfies the induction formula that the height satisfies when we go from dimension of y minus one to dimension of y. So since we define the height as the unique function that defines that induction hypothesis. We know that the integral is equal to the height. Thank you very much.